So zero fee routing asks on Twitter, honest question, what minimum size of channel would you recommend for routing nodes? My gut feeling would be 5 million, maybe 10 million Satoshis. I'm thinking about announcing a recommendation to just open as private if it's a smaller channel. Okay, so first of all, this is an excellent and great question. And I'm afraid I have to say, I don't know. Um, so far, the question, where do you open a channel of what size with whom, for how long and why has, to the best of my knowledge, not been answered properly, or at least to my satisfaction. Um, maybe people know the answer to this uh, and just don't share it, but I haven't seen a convincing answer yet. That being said, there might be a few things that I have to say to this question that don't quite fit in a tweet, so I decided to just make this quick video and try to discuss this. The main thought that I would have is to start with what kind of service level agreement would you want to provide for your users? We know from the probabilistic model and probabilistic pathfinding paper that the likelihood for a payment to fail on a channel is the amount of the payment size that is being sent over the channel divided by the capacity of the channel. Um, and I personally would say, well, maybe a channel should be able to uh, fulfill a payment with the probability of, let's say, 99%, right? So that means that um, if you expect that your payments on this channel are of size one Satoshi, you make a channel with a capacity of 100 Satoshis, right? Because um, the failure rate would be one over 100, right? And then in 99% of the cases, you would be successful, right? So. One way to answer this question is you could look at the actual amounts that are being sent through your node and you could define yourself a likelihood that you would want to offer to other nodes to select you in pathfinding and you start from that and choose your channel size. Um, the result obviously is, is the larger your channel, the higher the success probability, the higher the reliability. Um, but of course, then a lot of capacity and liquidity is allocated to that channel that you might have want to use to open a second channel, right? That's why I said initially this question is extremely difficult. Um, as you know, in the last year, um, my co-authors and I have dropped two papers to the archive. The first paper is about uh, probabilistic pathfinding. It's called Security and Privacy of the Lightning Network with Uncertain Balances, I think that's the title something close to that. And in that paper in chapter 4.2, we discuss heavily um, how you could define service level agreements and do exactly what I'm doing here of what do I have to do? What likelihood do I have to achieve on channels in order to be certain that I can deliver a payment with a certain bounded number of attempts or guarantee an a certain likelihood that the payment will eventually arrive at another node or how many attempts do I need to achieve the service level agreement. And I think in chapter five, we actually extend this theory quite a bit on the theoretic model that we um, describe. So for the mathematicians out there, I encourage you heavily to read this paper and use these kinds of mechanisms and modeling uh, proposals that we make to answer the question that zero fee routing was asking um, on the minimum channel size or what kind of channels people should set on their uh, nodes. Regarding the second part of the question with private channels, um, first of all, I think it's much better to call them unannounced channels um, because as of now, I don't think they're really private. Um, you can look in the uh, Lightning Bolt's uh, GitHub repository, I opened an issue there and pointed out why this is the case and people are working on solutions to mitigate this. But as of now, I think it's much safer to call them just unannounced channels. And uh, I have two thoughts on this. Um, the first thought is there is currently this mechanism being used by uh, especially LSPs to have so-called shadow channels. Um, what this does is they have a small channel that they announce on gossip. Um, but in secret, they have a parallel private channel where they have more liquidity that increases their reliability. From the perspective of probabilistic payment delivery and our research, it makes sense to not do the, those 
shadow channels, right? There might be reasons why LSP still might elect to do so, but I'm just saying from the perspective of um, reliable payment pathfinding, it makes a lot of sense to actually show your liquidity and announce your liquidity because then I know, oh, there is liquidity. I should use this channel for pathfinding. Um, with respect to smaller channels, um, I would consider them to some degree last mile channels, right? And if you look at the model that, for example, a Sunk and Phoenix wallet are running, if you have um, a Phoenix wallet, I believe most of your channels will be unannounced, um, maybe even all of them. I'm not quite sure uh, about the settings there and this can be configured. But um, I mean, that's exactly the model, right? The Ascent node is one of the largest nodes with a lot of liquidity, with a lot of channels. But a lot of the mobile um, uh, wallets that are connected to the Ascent node, the channels are just invisible for the network, right? And I would compare this to regular um, logistics where this is the so-called last mile problem. And of course, if you are a regular user who just wants to make a payment once in a while or receive a, a payment once in a while, it makes sense to have a channel um, that basically signals, please don't use me for routing. <laughs> and the best way you do this is by just not announcing it, right? So the second part of the strategy, it kind of makes sense to say, hey, if the channel is too small, I don't want to use it in routing. Um, and then I don't announce it. So, so I certainly think this is a smart idea. Um, I hope this information was useful for you. Um, I'm very happy to have more discussions about routing, probabilistic pathfinding, min cost flows, optimally reliable payment flows and all these kinds of things. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how active I can get on the YouTube channel and if I can make more videos like I did in the past where I put a lot of effort um, to also explain a lot of this stuff. I mean, this video obviously was very spontaneous, um, but I have the feeling uh, it might be more useful to some people than just an answer spread over two or three tweets. Um, I will obviously link the tweet of uh, Zero Fee Routing um, and my papers in the description. And yeah, let's see where this is going.